You're a woman of the 80s. You're smart. You're well-read. In fact, you've got it all together. That is, until she walks into the room. What kind of woman threatens you? One that doesn't, isn't open. One that's secretive. Probably the type of person that has to impress other people. Um, somebody that isn't, isn't really being herself in front of others. I wouldn't say any woman, but I don't like passive women. They just... I don't like snobby ones. Somebody big with a high position that can overrule me. Smart and pretty, and someone who has their nails perfect. No type of woman, because I usually feel that I'm as good as the next person, and I can handle it. One that doesn't like herself as a woman. No one. <laughs> no, I don't feel threatened by anybody. Ones that look better than I do. Well, with us today are three women who have the power to intimidate. In fact, some women might actually see them as dangerous. And today, we're going to find out why. Today, Sonia features the power of a woman. Find out what it is that gives some women a presence that intimidates. And a priest's story of courage as he crossed the line between church and state. Plus, the latest findings on the controversy over premenstrual syndrome. From Detroit, Michigan, through the USA Cable Network, seen nationwide, it's time for Sonia. Who are the women that threaten you? Might it be someone who is strikingly attractive and you might see as an immediate threat to your marriage? Might be a, a high-power career woman, everything that you always hoped that you could become? Could it be a woman who seems not to feel a necessity to have a man in her life, and therefore she kind of prods you to question why you think it's that necessary? Today, three women who some women just might love to hate. Let me introduce them to you. We have Marilyn Barnett with us, Constantina, and Nita Firestone. Now, Marilyn, let me start by asking you, why might some women be threatened of you? Well, frankly, until you asked me the question, I really never thought about anybody being threatened by me. But as you start to think about the possibility, uh, the fact that I hold a position that might threaten either theirs or their husband's career moves or livelihood, I think that may have some bearing on it. You're the president of an advertising firm, yes. correct? Yes. Okay, let's move to Constantina for a moment. Uh, do women ever feel threatened and why? I've been told that women feel threatened by me, yes, and I've felt it a lot. And it's funny because when I was growing up, I used to think that people just hated me because they would immediately become defensive and I'd walk into a room and they'd scatter. And, um, I would have to say it's, it's probably because of my appearance. Mm -hmm. And because of the fact that I'm a model. Mm -hmm. And Nita, what, a, what about you? Something threatening about you? Well, I wouldn't actually think so, but I am a gay woman. And um, I think that's very threatening to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Give us an example of how a gay woman might threaten other women. Well, I think just because gay women in this society are invisible to a, to a large degree, and that people will look at me and just assume that I'm heterosexual, and make, make that assumption just as that everyday thing. Um, and that they don't have any basis of comparison to say, oh, I, I don't know any gay women. But I think they do, because mm -hmm. gay women are everywhere. They just don't realize it. Mm -hmm. How do they behave towards you when they realize that you're gay, straight women? Um, a lot of times they get really shocked. A lot of times they, they are fearful because of the unknown and because I think of ambivalence about their own sexuality, perhaps. Mm -hmm. I think that that's probably one of the things that really strikes home and causes some questions in the woman who then discovers that you are gay. Marilyn, what about you? Any incidents that you might give us as an example of what happens when a woman is threatened, how she behaves, and how you might even handle it? Yeah, as a matter of fact, something happened uh, just last week, and it, it isn't the normal circumstance. It's, it's really kind of abnormal. But there was, uh, we have a, a great many women who work in the agency, and there was one who works in one of our satellite offices. And she was becoming very undermining. And I really couldn't understand why, because my attitude is that until proven otherwise, I would treat anybody 
as a, on the surface as a very honest person. And if they behave uh, in that way, I'm, I couldn't do enough for them. But she became very undermining. So the first thing that I thought was the, the right thing to do was to suggest that she come to Detroit so that we could sit down and have a face-to-face -face meeting as opposed to doing it on the telephone. Mm -hmm. And she did come to Detroit, and I sat down and explained to her that there was really nothing that I was doing that was going to hurt her. And if she pursued the endeavors that she was doing, that there was no opportunity for her to do anything but lose, because I owned the company. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it just became a kind of black and white situation. And I think that she understood that it was either that or leave. Yes, I, I imagine she did. That was somewhat concrete and very clear. Now, Constantine, what happens when a woman faces you? I mean, what, what is the situation that allows you to recognize that she is threatened? How does she behave? Immediately defensive or... Is there an example that you could just give us so that we might even see ourselves in that behavior? Yes. Uh, I can't say who, but I... I'm very close to someone who I recently introduced socially to a very prominent fashion designer who had come in from out of town. And this was kind of at a social gathering. And it just kind of came out of the blue. I said, so-and-so, this is so-and-so. And she turned around and she said, I like myself even though I'm not as tall as Constantina and I don't have black hair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, after I picked myself up off the floor, I thought, that's an awfully strange thing to say. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of situations I run into more often than not that are not spoken, that are just thrown at me in, in terms of attitude. When we continue, we're going to have a psychologist join us, a male in this case. We're going to try to learn a little bit something more about ourselves and whether or not those fears that many of us have as women are really well-founded. And we'll do that right after this. <laughs> Marilyn Barnett and Constantina and Anita Firestone, three women who some might uh, label as dangerous. And joining us now is Dr. Michael Abramsky, psychologist. I know you heard the interview that we've already had with the ladies. And what is the basis of the fears that we tend to have of other women? I think they, they, they're a broad range. Some of them are very practical. If a woman is afraid of an attractive woman because she feels her husband or boyfriend would be more attracted, uh, I think that's a very practical fear, ranging from I guess a, a more uh, unconscious, more extreme reaction to someone who takes a alternative sexual style that may stir up feelings in us that we haven't come to grips with. Mm -hmm. so some are very practical, some go deep into unconscious conflicts that people are not used to dealing with. Mm -hmm. Are they a matter of self-esteem? Could you say that in a broad way that that really covers it? Well, that was no pun. <laughs> in, the, in, in, in the broadest sense, again, if you look at self-esteem in terms of conscious attitudes toward ourselves versus some unconscious attitudes, certain kinds of things that are stirred up in us that uh, we're not aware of. For example, I find in my practice that many women are afraid of career women because of their own inability to come to grips with whether they should pursue that kind of thing, whether they have the talent on their own. Mm -hmm. so, so in that sense, their, their self-esteem is threatened because it stirs up feelings they haven't come to grips with. Mm -hmm. I, I'm kind of curious, are there any women that threaten you, Constantina? Honestly, no. You have not had a sense of being intimidated by another woman's presence. Marilyn? No, the truth is, no, that's, I have no fear of another woman, no. As a matter of fact, I feel very comfortable in the presence of most women. As we chatted earlier today, I found that we had a lot of um, commonalities that it was, it was interesting to discuss. Mm -hmm. And Nita, what about yourself? Well, I can't say I exactly feel threatened by women. I like women an awful lot. <laughs> but when you say that, that may be very threatening. You know, I, I was wondering if there's something that you might even do, the three of you, to threaten. When you say that, for example, people here kind of giggled, but there was that sense that you may have meant that in more than two ways. One, your comfort, Michael, you may want to comment. One, that there may be some feeling that any woman is a potential hit. And that any woman is a potential lesbianist, actually, because the only thing that... Um, 
a qualification that you have to have is that you're a woman. Mm -hmm. Michael, if, if uh, Nita was at a dinner party that I was giving and there were 10 or 15 guests uh, who were sitting around uh, with their husbands and she made that statement, I can see eight or nine of the guests just quietly and slowly but rapidly moving towards the door, leave, you know. Uh, that's a threatening kind of thing, don't you think? Well, as, as I said earlier, I think it's threatening because it taps into conflicts all people have. Our, our sexual identity is a, a very deep, very basic thing starting in the first years of life, and it's never completely reconciled for anybody. Mm -hmm. So when someone begins to display characteristics that are opposite than a, of a lifestyle that we've chosen, it begins to stir up certain kinds of things. The reaction you mentioned is interesting because I would say you can measure how, how deep the conflict is by the, the extreme kind of action. Someone who is mildly threatened might argue someone who is really threatened is going to leave the scene. They're going to avoid even dealing with those kind of feelings that mm -hmm. are present. Mm -hmm. let, let me say something about these two women because they both do something that I think is, is fascinating. Although I think Marilyn is more like the Alexis of Dynasty, not in her temperament, <laughs> but in her power position. Um, we have here someone who may look a little bit more like the Alexis uh, individual, but the two of them are very interesting. You'll note that their body language is fascinating. Their presence, the way they speak, there's a certain quiet and self-assurance. Just that can be anxiety-provoking. Isn't that true? Yes, I think that, that uh, uh, there, there's something uh, uh, going on with them that would, would spark curiosity. How did they get to that particular place? And, and probably the most likely response is a, a response of envy, mm -hmm. because it's unusual in practice. Uh, women have, to my experience, have less conflicts with affectional kinds of things, but much more conflicts over achievements. Mm -hmm. And achieving women uh, are generally seen as very threatening to them because of their own inability to come to grips with it. Would you stand for just a moment? I believe you had made some comments prior to the show about that very topic. Are you a career woman? Yes, I am. And uh, are other women threatened by this? I feel that they are because I have friends and associates that will say, how do you do these things? Mm -hmm. And the main thing that they will throw at me is she has five kids. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, sh show that tells me that they don't feel I should be able to do this. This is Or that they feel like less because they see you as more? Mm -hmm. would, would that be a part, of, so. a part of that? Okay, thank you. I think you wanted to make a comment about that, too. Would you stand also a career woman? Correct. And do you find other women look upon you with either envy or hostility? Uh, possibly envy, because I'm, I'm fairly successful in what I've chosen to do. And I'm a high achiever. And I've been able to do this uh, as a single parent. Mm -hmm. Now, do you do anything to bring those feelings out? Um, I hope not. I try to present a very positive image, but uh, one that's very succinct and that um, I feel that I expect an awful lot from people. Now, what do women say to you? I mean, that, that allows you to know that there, there may be some defensiveness. Marilyn mentioned that before, or some threat. Um, many times they will question me. They will want additional answers or they'll want more information. They'll want to find out how I did it uh, uh, and why I'm doing it. Uh -huh. um, and, and do they, they seem to need to find a negative, I mean, do they always yes. look yes. so that they're looking for a negative something, factor? Something's too? got to be wrong. I see. And if everything was right, then you'd be married. So you're I not see. quite perfect. I see. Okay, now that brings up an interesting point. Michael, I wonder if you would comment on this. I remember when I went into television, somebody said to me, give them a floor or they'll find one much larger than you would like them to have. Now, ladies, I wonder if any of you have ever thought of that, or Michael, if you might come in. Should you have one thing, I mean, either chewed off fingernails or one lip liner drawn just a little bit higher than the other, should you give people something so they won't pick on you? No, I, I think that if, if a woman has, or if any person has come to terms with themselves, accepts themselves, I think it becomes the other person's problem, not theirs. I agree. I, th I, think, I think they have to ask about how provocative they may be. I think like any person, they have to be sensitive to certain situations and recognize that people do have feelings about this. I don't think it's an occasion to change anything, though. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, then we're the ones who have to deal with it. Those right. of us, any of us who come right. into a situation and take a look at, at three women and say, either, my God, that threatens something about my emotions or yes. it, it threatens something about my sexuality. So let's see if we can learn something about how to deal with our fears, because sometimes we act a bit foolish when we are threatened by a woman, and then we have to live with the aftermath of that. So we'll talk about that when we return right after this.
Can women really count on each other for support? You know what I'd like to know? I'd like to know how the three of you behave if you're being attacked. Uh, Marilyn, has anyone ever attacked you? And, and if so, what's your response? I think it, it has to be very open and very frank and very... Uh, up front. You have to say, I'm very uncomfortable with what you're doing or what you're saying or your behavior. And I think we've got to talk about it. You and I have a problem. Uh -huh. On the other hand, I think that the neatest thing in the world to do is if you see another woman who you admire, tell her. Go up and say, I think you're terrific. And I'd like to tell you why I think you're terrific. And in that way, you meet some of the most wonderful people and establish some wonderful relationships. That's a great idea. Constantine, do you ever feel any responsibility to put people at ease? I mean, if you see somebody who is obviously shrinking in front of you and is holding her hand up in front of her face and, you know, whatever, but do you ever feel a, a need or a responsibility to somehow salve it and make her more comfortable? Yes, I do. Um, and I usually overcompensate. You know, I, I'm, I'm not well schooled at it enough yet where I can do it where it comes off easy. I start telling them all the wonderful things that I see about them and, and trying to let them know that I really am just another person and for most part I am viewed as not being one you know mm -hmm. I'm something that's just kind of put together and molded mm -hmm. so I try to become very real if you will yeah I needed there's a lot of baggage that comes along with the term uh, lesbian and there may be a lot of people who might like to get to know you but are fearful fearful that you're going to approach them, fearful that you're going to bring to the surface something they're not comfortable about or sure of, do you um, bring that to the surface or do you back off and say, look, that's, that's not anything that has to come between us in a friendship? Well, I think it's real important that that issue be brought up in a friendship or in my friendships. And I also feel sometimes like I'm a one-woman walking lesbian promotional person because I want to say to them, look, you know, I'm a lesbian and I'm your friend, and that doesn't enter into our relationship. You know, it's, a, it's just a friendship. And in a way, it's, it's like saying, you know, I'm just like you. Mm -hmm. And we are your daughters, we are your aunts and your cousins and your sisters, and we're just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. Michael, what advice do you have professionally for women who are seen as threatening and, and, and start to see it as undermining, not in this way specifically, but really feeling that they can't go on with this, might even consider trading what they're doing because they can't tolerate the lack of approval? Well, I think there are two questions in there. Uh, to refer back to what I said earlier, if, if an, I think every person has to be aware of their own stimulus value, how they affect other people, and to be sensitive to that in other people that they, they are this kind of person and, and often they get a particular kind of response. That is not, though, uh, necessarily an occasion to change. The person who feels they have to change to please others, I don't think has come to terms with who they are themselves. Mm -hmm. so we're really secure in that respect, and we can also recognize that we have an effect on other people and take that into consideration and be able to deal with it. I think that's all that has to be done. You had a comment or question? Yes, yeah, first of all, Marilyn, I remember you from the Farmer Jack advertising days. Um, I'd like to know, do you, you and Constantina, do you feel that women are more intimidated by you or men? And when you're in a room of people, can you feel that, that they're staring or that maybe they would like to approach you, maybe ask for an autograph, but they feel too intimidated to do it? Well, I'll respond. Uh, I don't feel that they feel intimidated at all. I really don't. And if I ever find out that that's the case, I'm, I'm frankly surprised because I don't see myself as being any different than anybody else. I just work hard. Uh -huh. <laughs> and that's really how I see it. Let's take a comment here. You had one. I have a comment about four women who are threatened by other women. Um, and I think that, that it has to do with self-esteem and that women need to value what they're doing. They need to look at their lives. And if they're housewives and mothers and, and um, doing the traditional things that women are raised to do, that that is valuable work. Mm -hmm. it's, it's valuable work and it's important work and that women should feel a sense of self-esteem from that. Okay, thank you. And we had a comment over here. Yes, ma'am. I think the biggest thing 
about or the the most important thing for me to help people people feel more comfortable about my lesbianism is to give them an opportunity to get to know me i think that you know fear of the unknown is the biggest um the biggest drawback mm -hmm. and that once we have an opportunity once i become real um that all that disappears mm -hmm. thank you michael um, there have been incidents, and I'm sure these ladies have at times <laughs> experienced this, where they almost wanted to put their arm around somebody who was behaving so foolishly out of their threat and saying, it's going to be okay. And for those of us who have stepped into that, um, said something terribly unkind or rude or attacking, how do we deal, what's the first step so that we don't behave so badly that we may spend the next weeks trying to apologize or somehow make it right? When, when, when people have prejudices, and that's what we're talking about, really, the beliefs that are not founded upon your real... Stereotypes, that's yeah, true, I guess. Uh, the same thing. Uh, when the beliefs that are not founded upon your real experience with someone, they're founded upon a, a preconceived kind of thing. I, I agree. I think the comment was very perceptive. You have to begin to tear down the stereotype. You have to begin to know that person as a person. You also have to recognize that that individual may be t uh, bringing up certain conflicts in you, certain anxieties you have. And I, I thought a very perceptive comment was to also recognize some of the envy behind it and, and talk to the person about those feelings, that there is some admiration there. You begin when you make a conciliatory kind of response, you begin to break down barriers and you begin to have someone reveal themselves to you as a person. There were a number of uh, uh, studies that were done on racial prejudice that found when blacks and whites lived together, a lot of those barriers began to go down. Many of the stereos par stereotypes parted. And to do that, you have to make uh, some kind of entree to know that person as a person. And I think that kind of dialogue becomes very important in healing that, the, that kind of breach. So then the first step really is overcoming the fear to the degree that you focus on the individual. Right. and not on the characteristics, which may be a very small part of who that person is, to get to know them. Right. Thank you. And thank you for sharing with us today. It was wonderful. Really enjoyed it. We'll be back with more right after this.